So hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's video, I want to share with you our experiences with our vertical axis wind turbine, uh, which is what we chose to help augment our solar system for our power uh, source here on the uh, on the land back in 2010, 2011, when we first got, got started. And in this particular video, we're going to go over uh, some basic differences of the vertical axis versus the horizontal axis, why we chose to go with the vertical axis, some of the problems that we had um, with the design and trying to implement it. Uh, of course, the ultimate fail of the system itself. And some possible changes and adaptations that could be done to make the system actually functional. And then the ultimate decision to uh, abandon it. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Some of the fundamental differences between a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. Uh, with a vertical axis, you can keep it lower to the ground. You don't have to put it on a, on a standing tower. Uh, usually at least a hundred feet in the air. The higher you get those, the better off you are. Uh, these you can keep low to the ground. Uh, another advantage or reason you may want to choose a vertical axis, or really just a, a basic difference, is that the cut-in speed, and that's the speed in which the windmill starts to turn, is much lower with a vertical axis than it is a horizontal axis. Uh, one of the reasons why you can keep it lower to the ground. You don't have to get up on those high winds. Um, sometimes the horizontal axis windmills have uh, a gear drive. In other words, you have a, a transfer of power from vertical to horizontal or from horizontal to vertical using gears. So the motor isn't up at the windmill. The motor is down at the bottom and the power is transferred through gears. All the way down and of course you lose power and things in torque and you have parts that wear out and and on and on and on uh, on a vertical axis wind turbine you have three blades usually on something uh, residential um, you may have considerably more blades uh, than that to get it to cut in and operate the, the way you want it to so those are just some of the basic basic differences in the vertical axis wind turbine versus the horizontal. Now we chose the vertical axis wind turbine for uh, some of the reasons that we just discussed that were advantages to us. Number one, a lower height uh, to where we didn't have to build a tower. That would have been uh, not labor intensive and, and cost prohibitive for us at the time. The other was the, the low cut-in speed. Uh, we wanted something to start working quickly. Um, we do have some pretty strong winds uh, being on the side of a hill, uh, especially you know two or three months out of the year, it's quite strong. Uh, but we still wanted it to cut in or get moving quickly uh, with wind so that they didn't have to have extreme winds in order to operate. So that was a consideration. Uh, one of the other considerations was supposedly the vertical air wind turbines are less noisy than the horizontal and uh, in general less impactful on the environment because they're lower and uh, the diameter of the blades isn't as wide so the chances of creatures flying into it are supposedly less. I don't have experience with a horizontal wind turbine to compare. As a matter of fact, I don't have a lot of experience with a vertical wind turbine, as we'll, we'll find out later. Uh, so, that's why we made the decision to go with the one that we did. Now, our vertical axis wind turbine was actually manufactured uh, by a local guy. And when I say local, I mean Salvador, Bahia, Brazil, which is about six hours east of our property. He's kind of a one-man uh, engineer, handyman, manufacturer, you know, do it all. Uh, very talented guy. 
he had come across a vertical axis wind turbine design uh, from someone in Europe, I think Switzerland, I believe, and had purchased one and it was actually in operation at his property in Salvador uh, that, we've got, that we've got to see. The design was similar, but the materials were different. So basically what he had done was taken this windmill that was functioning for him and reverse engineered it and ma manufactured something similar out of different materials. And when I say different materials, I'm mainly talking about the the blades and the structures that hold the blades together or hold them in place. Uh, on the original design, the blades were aluminum and the actual uh, braces and, and mounts and whatnot were steel, painted steel. He elected to go with wood for a structure uh, spanning out from the stator and holding the the blades and to use a combination of wood and fiberglass for the blades themselves. The blades are fiberglass or the wing shape, you know, kind of. And then it has uh, a couple of plywood baffles in it for stability. Now, right off, uh, this should have been a, a red flag just in, in a common sense. In order for this thing to really operate effectively, it needs to be nearly perfectly balanced because it's going to be spinning quite fast uh, and if it's not balanced it's going to oscillate and with those oscillations it's basically going to tear itself apart so that those changes in material should have been a red flag but anyway moving on we got the thing built we decided to move forward with it uh, the package included the base uh, which was steel rod threaded at one end for the bolts to mount the, the stand and a little template to make sure that they were lined up and these uh, threaded rod were one meter deep or one meter in length with a little hook or a little L at the bottom and encased in concrete so basically a meter maybe 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters by a meter deep uh, concrete was holding the base and that worked fine. Then he supplied the pole, uh, two sections of pole bolted together, the stator which is a combination of the wires and the magnet, and the blades and their mounts, uh, and some instructions on how to put all this together uh, because he couldn't make the trip to come install it. So there was a little bit of a discount there because normally he would have. So that's how we've we got our wind turbine. We're going to start. We're going to put it in place. We're going to get going. So over the next little while um, and time, uh, we made the base. We put the poles together. Uh, we mounted everything, and and we got it up. And uh, sure enough, it got it got spinning. Um, taking some crude measurements, looking at at what was going on, uh, power wise. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, uh, also included in the package was the control panel, which consisted of a, a small meter, a couple of breakers, and some voltage regulators uh, to deal with the power coming in. So, in that control panel, we're making some observations. And even without a load, we're starting to see that... Um, even at a pretty good clip mark, pretty good, you know, RPM, uh, it's only generating seven, eight, nine, ten volts. Um, this is going to be an issue because in order to charge a 12 volt battery, you have to, you really ideally, you should be somewhere between 14 and 15 volts in order to do that effectively. So. Uh, I'm not getting to my the voltage that's going to allow current to pass, and this is going to be an issue. So that was one of our first obstacles. And we can see here in the in the display, it's just not getting there, even though the display is upside down. So, so this wind turbine is 
rated at a thousand watts if it's producing 12 volts which is this we'll call it 80 amps so that's that's pretty substantial when it's turning and of course generating more than 12 volts so that would be doing that all the time but when it was working it would definitely deliver and you know it would charge some things pretty quickly or at least give you access to a, a decent amount of power so what I'm starting to realize at this point is we have two significant issues number one even at a pretty good speed, we're not generating the voltage necessary to allow the current to pass from the stator to the battery. So the voltage has got to get up. And with the present design, the only way that voltage is going to get up is to increase the speed through the wind. Well, obviously I have no control over that. However, that brings us to our second situation, which is at the RPMs that we're generating 10, 11 volts, uh, the windmill is spinning pretty well. It's pretty violent. Uh, the oscillations are happening, and I can definitely see where with these materials of wood and fiberglass, there's no way it's going to withstand this type of uh, oscillation for any real length of time. So that's going to be a maintenance issue. Um, so those are the two main obstacles which are significant obviously everything else seems to be okay All, everything else is doing what it's supposed to do so how this thing works is you have some blades which capture the wind and spin around uh, magnets on top of a platter of wire or when I say wire, little bobbins, little individual bobbins of wire, and this generates a current. So by changing the relationship between the wires and the magnets, we can manipulate our power, voltage, current, and so forth. Um, so I don't remember exactly, but through my research, uh, I came up with what I think would be the change to make my voltage higher and my current lower. Um, to give me the proper voltage in order to charge my batteries. And it was changing the, the wire wraps itself, leaving the, the size of the wire the same, but changing the wraps, I believe. Uh, but it, anyway, you can change the number of magnets. You can change the size of the wire, the number of wraps of the wire, the number of bobbins uh, to accommodate all this. So... That part of it, I believe I could overcome. So basically it would be creating those bobbins and then encasing them in resin. Because basically you have a sandwich. You have magnets on top as if it were a bread, and then your bobbins are your slab of meat or cheese or whatever. So that part I think I could overcome. Which brings me to the, the second situation of the blades. How to make these blades precise. I mean really precise in size and weight and, and everything. Uh, so when this thing gets spinning around, it's stable. Uh, that's above my, my skill level. And I think probably above most people's skill level. Unless you really have a machine shop with some very specific uh, measuring devices. So I don't think it's very realistic. So some final thoughts and recommendations. Um, number one, I don't think that this particular design has a path to functioning, at least not where I am, uh, with the, the money I have available. Maybe it could be done somewhere. So I don't think it's, it's doable. Uh, recommendations, if I was to do this again, I would go with a horizontal wind turbine and wrestle with those challenges such as the noise, the tower. Uh, with the noise, I'd have to get it, you know, far away from my house. Uh, which brings me back to the vertical axis wind turbine, which was quite noisy in itself, so I'm not sure that was even a, a gain. Um, but yeah, I would definitely try a 
horizontal uh, wind turbine. However, fast forward to 2023 now, with 12, 13 years, um, the price of solar has gone way down and the amount of sun that we have here, uh, that's where I would go. I wouldn't even play with these windmills uh, because of the the maintenance and the mechanics, you know, of it all. There's just there's too many moving parts, uh, too many structures that have to be built in order to accommodate all of this. The noise, the, I, I just wouldn't do it. Uh, as a general thought, I'm not really excited about the vertical axis wind turbine. Um, the power transfer from the wind to, to what you get, the efficiency's not real good. Um, again, you know, the forces involved here are, I think it's a, a, a neat concept. And there are some designs out there I've seen lately that uh, they're using industrially uh, that solve some of the, the issues that this particular design has. So maybe they're moving forward, but uh, really investigate what you see out there with vertical axis wind turbines. Uh, again, the transfer is ju it's just not there. So that's my final thoughts on all of that. Uh, certainly I'll be available to answer any questions or uh, give additional thoughts to any of you guys out there that are considering you know, doing something similar. So you can leave those things in the comments or, or whatnot. But I sure do appreciate your time and thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.